Good afternoon and welcome to NYFP. This afternoon I'm joined by Todd Schoenberger of Landcold Trading. Hi Todd, thanks for joining me today. Hi Remy, how are you? Good, thank you. Well, today is another sell-off here on Wall Street and that does follow a better than expected U.S. jobs report for the latest month. What is your take on the sell-off we've been seeing in the past a few hours? Well, I got to tell you, there's several reasons for this sell-off. I mean, one, the jobs report, yes, beat expectations, but our expectations were already low to begin with. It's the equivalent of getting a D on an exam when you were expecting to fail. So realistically, at 117,000 new jobs, that does nothing for this for this recovery, if we are even in a recovery. So the stock market, traders on the floor are actually talking about that now. We're not actually, uh, we're, we're not uh, brimming with confidence that, that there is a recovery underway. And all one needs to do is look at the poor macroeconomic data. When you look at all of that, I mean, it's really a difficult time to, to be in the stock market right now. So I think that, that has a lot to do with selling pressure at this point. Well, it's interesting in terms of trading action that we saw this week, uh, the major averages fell over 4% yesterday. Yeah. And it's not as though there was any new news. And a lot of people have referred to the U.S. and other economies kicking the can down the road. Right. But how severe do you think uh, the macro and all the debt issues will get in the coming weeks? Let me tell you, there is zero positive information out there that's going to propel the bulls to start running again. I mean, if you just, we were really banking on earnings to be great. And earnings, they're okay, but then all of a sudden you start hearing about all these corporate layoffs. Cisco at 10,000 people, Research in Motion at a few thousand. Obviously, the financial district is getting decimated right now. So when you start looking at everything that's taking place, there's not a lot of good news out there for the bulls. It's tons of bad news. I mean, I think there's one optimistic guy that was on the trading floor today, and now he's tied up and in the basement somewhere. It's very bearish, very pessimistic right now on the floor, and I have to think that that's going to continue for the rest of the summer. Well, as we look ahead to the upcoming trading week, we've got the jobs number out of the way and we do have the Fed meeting. But when do you think we'll hear anything out from the Fed? Do we have to wait until the Jackson Hole meeting? Well, yes. And we're not. We're, what we'll hear is the regular comments that, OK, we're going to we know that we're in a, a rough patch, we, um, a prolonged period of low interest rates. I mean, blah, blah, blah. We've heard it over and over again. Remember, this is a Fed that's very reactive, not proactive. And all one needs to do is look at the year to year over year uh, GDP percentage right now. It's now at one point six percent in this country. If you go back to 1948, anytime we dip below two percent, this country always ends up in a recession where I'm going with this Remy is that the Fed right now with this meeting needs to come up with a strategy, a plan that's going to talk about quantitative easing. And I don't really, none of the traders really care what they call it. They need to do something though. We need a steroid injection and we're not hearing it. And the problem is I think everybody, every trader here is thinking if we don't have anything like that, then how bad is it going to get until they do something and it will it be too late? So it looks pretty dire for the immediate future. Okay, Todd, last but not least, since we're on the topic of central banks, we did see intervention by the Swiss National Bank as well as Bank of Japan this week. And those uh, currencies have come off recent gains, but do you think we'll continue to see uh, safe haven demand for those currencies and for gold? Absolutely. I mean, look, the U.S. Is, is really behind the curve as, as far as on this currency fight right now. Look, the Swiss and the and the, the, the Japanese, they're protecting their exports right now. Clearly, they're going to end up devaluing if they need to because they're looking out for their own well-being. Look, the United States is really in a tough situation right now, but I don't know if we even need to do anything as far as devaluing because realistically, we're going to have that happen anyway. You have a debt issue. You have a higher debt ceiling that just took place. And don't forget, like we are talking about, further Fed accommodation. All three of those factors are the perfect ingredients for devaluing the U.S. dollar. Okay, Todd. Well, thank you so much for weighing in on all the issues, and thanks for all your insight today. Thank you, Remy.